All right, so we are back to continue with part three of my look at the history of Voivod. So we're starting off here now in the year 2001. The band have come through some really rough times in the 1990s, and basically the band has broken up. Um, they had some troubles, of course, they had the accident in Germany in 1998. Eric was recovering, he was walking, still needed crutches at one point. Things were getting better, but apparently he still was not back in perfect shape again. The band had tried to sue in Germany, but they lost. And then, of course, there was the issue of insurance suing Voivod for Eric. Anyway, it, they had basically lost their momentum and their finances were in terrible shape. And so the band, Piggy and Away, just had a meeting with, with E-Force and said, we're going to give the band a rest for a bit now. So as Away and E-Force walked away from Piggy's place, E-Force felt like, well, that was kind of a, a nice way of letting me out of the band. He understands it was a business decision, but he, he knew, he had a sneaky suspicion, Snake was going to come back into the band. And so since he was gone, also the bass player, he suggested, why don't you call Jason Newstead? Anyway, uh, for a little while there, there was no activity. Voivod was no more for a period of time there. Piggy was working in, as the lighting director in a theater in Montreal. Away was working on other projects. And then an interesting thing happened. A certain Mr. Dave Gruhl of uh, Foo Fighters and Nirvana fame decided that he wanted to make an album paying an homage to his favorite bands from the 1980s. And so he began writing an album's worth of material of really heavy stuff. And then he contacted some of his favorite singers, including Lemmy Kilminster of Motorhead, Kronos of Venom, and Snake of Voivod, to name but three, to ask them if they would write and sing, uh, write lyrics and sing a song for his album, which I think they did. Anyway, Snake sure as heck did. <laughs> so Snake guessed it on uh, Dave Gruel's album. And then Away was asked to do the cover artwork for the album. So the album was called Probot. Now, Snake had actually appeared on stage with Voivod at one time. I think it was in 1999. And the band were still kind of in touch. So at this point here, Snake was getting really interested in getting back into playing with Voivod. He had left the band in early 1994. Apparently he'd opened a restaurant or two. He had also started, picked up guitar and started his own band, a Union, Union Made, I believe it was called, which he said was just a rock band just for fun. It was nothing, you know, difficult like Voivod. But he was really eager to get back. And so the band got together, Piggy, Away, and Snake, and started talking about doing something. So who were they going to get for the bass? Well, it was not going to be Blackie. The band actually... Their former, their, their first manager, Maurice Richard, actually got the band together for, I think it was a one-day event in 2002, celebrating the 20th anniversary of the band. And there was some signing going on, and apparently Blackie was there. But in 2003, um, with Blabbermouth, um, Away had this to say about Blackie. In a March 2003 interview, Away said this, Unfortunately, we really don't get along with Blackie. He is the one who will never be back in the fold. I know that it would please the hardcore fans and everything, but it just won't happen. The circumstances of his departure were really hurtful. It has a lot to do with childhood friendship and broken trust, and I don't think we can patch it up, actually. It's too bad. It really got to the bottom of the barrel with the Angel Rat recordings. We were not too sure about the final result of the album, but our approach was just, okay, let's keep going and next time we'll do better, you know? But it didn't happen like that with Blackie. And the way he left the band was really, really awful. But it's something that we never discuss in the press and it's an obscure part of the Voivod story. It's just that the breakup was so sour. With Snake, it's different. The way it happened was on friendly terms, and it was different circumstances. I know that Blackie really, really hates Angel Rat, but we just thought back then, well, we'll do better next time. Let's keep going. You fall, you stand up again, and you keep going. 
Some parts were written to be huge, like the song Angel Rat and Freedom and stuff like that, but it came out a little too soft because of the production. But we tried. Terry Brown was a gentleman, and it ended up that his sound was not appropriate for Voivod. But hey, it was done, and there was no more money to put into the project for a remix or anything like that. I think the smartest move would have been to tour for the album and make a better one after that. But Blackie didn't feel that way. There is always more than one reason for somebody to leave a band, and some of his reasons I will never know. It's all in Blackie's head. Jason Newstead was recently out of Metallica. His time with the band had not been easy. First of all, he took over for Cliff Burton. And the first album he appeared on, the first album of original material and Justice for All, for some reason had the bass really reduced in the mix. It's said often that there may have been a kind of unconscious or subconscious resentment towards Jason because he was there and not Cliff. Now, it has nothing to do with his abilities as a musician. He could play the bass and obviously his time with Metallica saw them rise to their greatest popularity with the Black Album. And of course, through some rather dubious stages afterwards, some people might like it, some people don't. But anyway, the hardest part, I think, for Jason Newstead in Metallica was that he was not really given the freedom to write material. And when he did try to do so in outside projects, um, Lars and James were not happy about it. He actually worked together with Devin Townsend on a project there around the early 2000s. But once Lars and James found out about it, they told him that if you're a member of Metallica, you've got to give it 100% or you're not a member of Metallica. Simple as that. Well, in the early 2000s, also Metallica was battling Napster and the atmosphere in the band was not really good. And Jason really wanted to do his own thing and they wouldn't let him, so he left the band. Lars and James were really upset about it. In fact, there was an interview just a couple, a year or two ago, I think, there's a video on YouTube where they explain about what happened at the time, and they agree that they were really too harsh, and basically they were big jerks about it, <laughs> because of course Jason wanted to write his material as well, of course he needed his creative outlet, and they kept stopping him all the time. And when he left the band, they were like, hey, you don't leave us. Well, anyway, they understand it now, and apparently they're on better terms with Jason than they were at the time. And at the time Jason left the band, he also said, like, he was a fan of Metallica before joining them. So, yeah, maybe a small part of him is kind of angry at the band, but 90% of him wants to see the band be able to do again, uh, be on top again like they were before, do something new and, you know, make the metal scene exciting like they did in the early days. So anyway, I think Jason sounds like a pretty good guy. So uh, yeah, of course, he was friends with Voivod. He had worked together with Away and Piggy in just some fun recording sessions in 1996 called the Tarat um, Project Sessions anyway. And as I said, the album, the material was never released because both parties were under contract. However, one of the songs, M Body, appeared on the Phobos album. So the band decided to contact Jason Newstead, ask him to come out. Would he produce their new album? Would he play bass on the new album? And then finally, would he just join Voivod? <laughs> Jason, of course, had been a fan of the band since they were on the Metal Blade label back in the early part of the 80s. And he had followed them all this time with their recordings and so on. So he loved Voivod and he was more than thrilled to be part of the band. And in fact, there was a statement he said somewhere here. Let me just check the notes. Yeah, he said, I feel that I have been able to live out two dreams in one lifetime. Talking about being able to play with Metallica, a band he was a fan of, and then getting to play with Voivod, a band he was a fan of. So of course, everyone in Voivod got a nickname. So Jason Newstead became Jasonic. The atmosphere in the band was really charged with positivity. In an interview with uh, Kanak, I think it is, uh, both Snake and Jason, who were Jasonic, who were interviewed separately, both really were bubbling with enthusiasm about the band. Um, just, it was so exciting, and it felt that Voivod was being revived. Now, 
The band, of course, had been in trouble before financially, but Jason had put a lot of his money away during his time with Metallica, and now he was going to invest it into Voivod. They were going to record the album at his Chop House Studios in California, and he said it was a funny thing for him when they started recording. They told him, Jason, Jasonic, you gotta turn up the bass. It's like, you want the bass louder? Yes! Voivod needs lots of audible bass. The 10th full-length album by Voivod was simply titled Voivod, and it was released uh, by Chop House Records originally on March 4th, 2003. The opening track, Gas Mask Revival, was lyrically a concerned look at the state of the world, but it also ref made a reference to Snake being back in the band because back in the early days when the band performed on stage, um, Snake would come out wearing a gas mask. That was actually the thing that Dave Grohl's friend was really impressed with when Voivod first hit the stage there opening for cro and Venom way back in 86 at the Ritz in New York. Oh, there's the gang on the back there. <laughs> An interesting thing, uh, some people at Industrial Light and Magic approached the band. They had been longtime fans and they offered to do a video for the, the final track, We Carry On. And at first the band said, oh, we, we can't afford to pay for a video by Industrial Light and Magic. But they said, no, we want to do the video, so we're going to call in all favors and um, we can do something for you. So Industrial Light and Magic were behind what you see in the video for We Carry On, the big kind of, uh, this kind of like spider character that appears on there and so on. So that's pretty cool. Now, I had last heard Nothing Face and I missed all the Voivod albums after that until 2011, I started backtracking. And for me to hear this one and the other two in the uh, Jason Newstead era, it was really something different. Uh, first of all, Gas Mask Revival. I love the song, but it, it certainly had a different feel. And I guess that's because, you know, we were now in the 2000s. This was not the 1980s anymore. We were in the 2000s now, and there was a different sound. And overall, I think this album seems to have, of course, the sci-fi um, element that's common in Voivod, and of course, Piggy's unusual chords, giving that kind of dissonant sound. But Basically, the, mu the music was less complex. The music is less complex on this album. Um, less than, say, like, you know, Killing Technology or Nothing Face or something like that. And I also feel it has a little bit more of a motorhead sound to it. Now, whether this was because of Jason joining the band, but I don't really think so. Or if this was just the way that Piggy was writing at the time. You know, you could say new member in the band, so new sound to the band. But as... Uh, Eric said when he joined um, with Negatron and Phobos, he said, yeah, the new sound is not really me exactly. You know, I'm just following the direction of Piggy and Away. They are the, the captains of the ship and I just do what they tell me to do. So basically the sound change that came for Negatron and Phobos were actually uh, basically, I would say it was Piggy who was behind that. And Eric, just of course his voice, and so on made it a little bit different but mostly it was Piggy's decision and I think it's probably the same thing with the Jason Newstead albums it was the style that Piggy was writing in at the time as for rankings um, most people most of the videos I watched people ranking the albums the Jason Newstead albums rank down at the bottom for some reason um, but people always say they're good it's just if you want to hear Voivod that Voivod sound you probably don't reach for these albums first. But there was one person who actually ranked this album up quite highly. And it's got, it does have some great music on here. I do still like it, nothing, no. I actually like that Voivod's style has changed bit by bit over the years because it makes the band more interesting. You don't look back on a catalog of what now, 15 albums, and they're all more or less the same with just some small changes here and there. You've got different eras in Voivod, so you can choose what you feel like listening to and you can mix it up a little bit. Jasonic's arrival in Voivod also coincided with him getting hired to play for Ozzy. So in the summer of 2003, when Voivod were actually opening for Ozzy Osbourne, Jasonic would come out and play the Voivod set, then go back and get ready to do a two-hour Ozzy set. He was 
really full of stamina at the time and away said he was just a warrior going out and giving it his 100% for both bands. That was really cool. Then, of course, now with Snake back in the band with Voivod and of course Metallica's bassist now in Voivod and opening for Ozzy Osbourne, the band got a lot of exposure. With spirits running so high and everything feeling so good, the band began writing material for what was going to be a double album. Piggy already got a good head start and recorded all of his guitar parts down and left them on his laptop computer, um, which he recorded them all at Chop House Studios again with Jason. And the idea was coming together, the next album would be a double album. And then, tragedy struck. Just when everything seemed to be going so well, Piggy was diagnosed with colon cancer. He had had a tumor in the past. If you recall, we talked about it in the first video, something behind his optic, optic nerve. He had uh, special pills taken and the tumor was dissolved and he was fine again. So the band thought, okay, well, he's in a rough shape now, but you know, he's going to get over it and then we'll be able to continue. And then away got the phone call, bring my laptop to the hospital, which he did. And then Piggy walked him through all the tracks that he had recorded and told him what it was he had in mind to do with those songs. And then on August 26th, 2005, Denis Piggy d'Amour passed away. The band was, of course, devastated. What were they going to do? I mean, Piggy was basically the, the, the founder of Voivod along with Away and the founder of the Voivod Sound. Yeah, I mean, they had just been riding this big high, you know? Anyway, Eric E-Force, Forrest with his band E-Force, he recorded one of the songs from the unreleased Voivod album, a track called Victory. He did it with Away's permission as a, as a tribute to Piggy. And as well, uh, Daniel Monran's band Martyr, they recorded the song Brain Scan from um, Dimension Hadros for their 2006 album Feeding the Abscesses. Piggy had really left his mark on the metal scene, particularly in the Quebec metal scene. He, his chords, his riffs, his way of writing was really unique. Um, Eric used to call him Riff Master P, and he fondly recalled some of the interesting times they had recording together, like when, for the song Bacteria on the Phobos album, Piggy had to record a guitar solo, and he just propped his guitar up on a couch in the studio and said, okay, record, and pulled out an electric razor and just started rubbing it on the strings to see what kind of effect he could get out of it. Also, there was another solo where the whole guitar solo was just two notes just these wavering notes. And it was that Piggy was not about flash. He was not about totally shredding and blowing your mind away. Piggy had a kind of unique genius about how he approached music and what kind of effect uh, his playing would give to the song that they were working on. If it needed to be a fancy guitar solo, he could do it. If it was more about kind of weird effects and sounds and so on, he could just as well come up with that. After some time, the band decided that they would, they should, go together and at least put out one more album with all the material that Piggy had written, why not? And it was a pretty sorrowful affair at first, but once they started listening to the recordings and hearing about what Away had learned that they were going to do with them, everybody got really excited about it. And they felt, you know, Piggy's spirit was there in the music. So. They got charged up and they went ahead and released this album here. Now the notes that Piggy had written down, it just said Kators, written K-A-T-O-R-Z. <laughs> Kators is of course, this is basically the phonetic spelling of the French word for 14, Kators. Why though, if this was their 11th studio album, was this called 14? Well. It's the 11th studio album, but you also have to remember there was a Best of Voivod album, 
there was the Chronic album and the Voivod Lives album. So with those three added on to this one, uh, that does make this actually release number 14 from the band. The style continues more or less as the previous album Voivod, but it there are there is a noticeable difference in the music here. The opening track, The Getaway, this is my favorite Voivod song of those three Jason Newstead albums. This is also an al a song I would put in my, what, like top 20 for Voivod. Very tempted to put it in the top 10. Such a kick-ass song on here. One point that's actually interesting here on the back, this thing here, it actually has all the band members' names. Not their nicknames, their real names on here. So I guess maybe that's also a kind of tribute to who they are, specifically this gentleman here who is no longer with us. The band did not tour for this album for obvious reasons. And after its release uh, in the years 2006-2007, Voivod once again went into a period of inactivity. Um, Away was working in two other bands, uh, Cosmos and uh, Les Écorchés. Les Écorchés? I don't know. <laughs> and Jason, he was working with uh, Echo Brain. So, yeah, Voivod went into a period of inactivity after the release of Cator's. Fact was, there was still another album's worth of guitar tracks that had been recorded. Remember, it was originally going to be a double album, and they had only picked out some for the first album there, Katoras, out of the pair. So, the band thought, as the final tribute to Piggy, they should put together that one more album. Jason was, of course, going to play the bass, but he had some shoulder troubles, and it seemed he might not be able to play the bass for the recording. There was talk about asking both Eric and Blackie to come in and play the bass parts, but Jason, Jasonic, was able to recover and come in and play those parts for the recording of the album. Now an interesting thing was, around 2008, the band were getting asked if they would do some kind of one-off shows here and there. And Jason, honestly, was more or less feeling kind of burned out with the last several years. He had, of course, been with Voivod and as well with Ozzy Osbourne and been doing the Echo Brain thing and um, now basically quite busy. So Jason decided he was going to step back out of the music scene for a bit. Well, by an interesting chance, uh, over the last few years... Blackie had actually been playing together with Daniel Mongrain uh, whenever they were going to do the, the band that Daniel was in when they were going to do a Voivod song Blackie came in to play the bass and it seemed that the two of them worked really well together Daniel was a fan of Voivod ever since he was 11, 12 years old and got his first cassette, Killing Technology his first concert was Nothing Face he really knew how to play the Voivod songs, and he worked very well together with Blackie. So one day after seeing Danielle and Blackie together at a show, they asked Blackie if he wouldn't mind coming in and joining up with Voivod to play for these kind of one-off shows they were being asked to do. One of them was the Heavy MTL Festival in Montreal. So um, Blackie agreed, and he said, I hadn't been playing with the band for 17 years, hadn't even been playing in a metal band for 17 years, except for with these, you know, um, infrequent stints with uh, Daniel. And he just said, you know, I, I think, I think I'm ready to do this again. So they did the Heavy MTL festival show, and then they were asked to do another one, um, another show, and then they were asked to do another one. And the band at this point didn't really have any plans to continue going. But things were kind of happening. Blackie was back in the band. Daniel Mongran, who had, of course, also played with uh, Cryptopsy and Gorguts, um, very big name on the Canadian metal scene there, um, he was doing a really fine job in the band. So the fans were responding. Things were starting to look pretty positive here by the end of the 2000s. Some other things that happened... Um, 
In 2009, a book of Away's artwork called Worlds Away, which was put together by Martin Popoff, famous Martin Popoff music journalist, was finally released after some delay in the production. And also on June 23rd, 2009, the final of the, the last of the Jason Newstead Jasonic albums came out. This is Infinity. And what's interesting is the album cover. All of Voivod's albums tend to have red and black and gray and pink and purple, maybe a bit of orange, those colors. They don't have this very monochromatic type, like only black and gray and white type album cover. For me, actually, this was the first Voivod album I got after I re after I revived my interest in the band in 2011. So, you know, my last Voivod album was Nothing Face, and then this one, it was surprisingly different. First of all, I felt Snake's vocals were not as strong as they had been before, but I, I've since come to accept his, his vocals in the 2000s there. Um, but still, there were some songs on here that really got my attention. I think um, In Orbit is probably my favorite, but also Volcano, Volcano, Pyramidome, Morpheus, uh, God Phones too. The one here, I think it's Room with a VU. Um, yeah, okay. There are some points on this album where Snake is doing some pretty weird stuff with the vocals. And I think it's Room with a VU where he's doing this blah, 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 blah. And he keeps doing that. And at the end of the song, he does that too. And it kind of makes me wonder, like, dude, that's not really cool. <laughs> And I think also at the very end of the album, there's also these kind of like weird vocalizations and sometimes in backwards or whatever. It just sounds a bit strange, but maybe of the three Jason Newstead albums, this is the one I would say that I enjoy the least. However, of course, still great tracks on here. And this is, of course, the final album to feature original material by Piggy. Leftover, of course, from his recordings there in 2004, 2005, before he passed away. There was also a rumor I read around the time there, 2009, that Piggy had recorded material for a solo album or two. I haven't read any other mention about that, though. And just some people said, you never know with Piggy, he was full of surprises. There might be something else to turn up sometime. But of course, that was around that time, uh, interviews 2009, 2010. So nothing seems to have come out of it since. So, anyway, what was happening with the band now? There was definitely magic going on in the band right now. I mean, Daniel Mongran, he played Piggy's parts so well, and he actually became an official member of the band, being given the name Chewy, which is partly due to the guy's hair. I mean, he has this thick mane of long, curly hair, also, he was a fan of Star Wars, but apparently, actually, when he was playing in another band, um, one of the band members said, you know, you, you're like Chewie from Star Wars, Chewbacca. And he said that was the only nickname I ever had. So it stuck with him for the band and fits in really nicely. So we now had Snake on vocals, Chewie on guitars, Blackie on bass, and Away on drums. And in 2009, they said, it's a little bit early to say, but it would be nice to maybe start writing some new material. Now, in January of 2011, Voivod were invited on the inaugural cruise of the 70,000 tons of metal sailing around there and the Bahamas. And after that, they began recording new material for an album that was finally released on January 22nd, 2013, Target Earth. All right, what did I say about band members joining the band and the sound changing? Blackie is back in the band, and the Voivod sound from the late 80s came back again. Of course, more modern uh, sounds and recording equipment and so on, and I have got uh, Chewy writing the music on guitar, but this was really a kind of return to that classic Voivod sound, not the kind of more, what, like a... Uh, sci-fi tinged motorhead biker rock type sound if you want to call it that of the Jason Newstead area and not this kind of like a you know, heavy industrial groove metal kind of sound they had with with E-Force 
this was the classic Voivod sound. And almost as if to bring that back again, the opening track, Target Earth, the title track, opens with Blackie's bass and also features a part with Blackie's bass later on. And the second track, Kluskopokom, also has a section with just Blackie's bass, which is like they were doing it back in the, the late 80s. So there was really a feel of a return to form. You had like, of course, the, the kind of more progressive element in the music. You had the, what I call the clangy chords, the ones that are really high up the net and that kind of like kind of, kind of sound, you know? We're back again. There were still like, there were some thrashy segments. There was like, you know, strange time signatures, of course, dissonant chords and all this kind of thing. Um, one song here, Mechanical Mind, uh, Chewie said that when he was writing the music, he tried to incorporate bits of each of the Voivod eras into the music. And that is actually one of the fan favorites of the album. My personal favorite is Kluskapokom. I just feel that is just a a perfect example of what a Voivod song sounds like. It's got the fast parts, it's got the thrashier parts, and it's got the bass break, and it's got the slowdowns, and it's got the clangy chords, and that's uh, just really wonderful. I, you know, I got back into Voivod 2011, and I picked up everything that I didn't have. And then this album came out two years later. I was a bit late on getting it. When I got it, though, it was like, wow, Voivod are really back to doing what they were doing. Since then, I have found my feelings towards the album have cooled a little bit, and I realized with listening to it recently, it's because of the sound. The drums have this really big, explosive, echoing sound, which is not typical for a Voivod album. Hi, Karama. <laughs> also, while the bass is great and the vocals sound really nice, and the guitar playing, the riffs and all that are cool, but the one thing I find with the heavier side of the guitar it seems it's weak against the bass. Um, in the more traditional sound of Voivod, I always felt, you know, the higher guitar chords contrasted with um, Blackie's bass riffs. But when the guitars went low, they really fit in nicely for that extra punch with the bass. And I don't feel it happens all the time here. There's sometimes I feel that when the guitar goes low, it doesn't have the same power to fit in with the bass as much. And I think even though I keep going back and listening to it and thinking, yeah, it is good, it is good, it is Voivod, it is good. Afterwards, I think, but something about it wasn't quite right. But anyway, the important thing was that Blackie was back, the sound is back again, and well, okay, one strange thing here I have to say about the album cover art. Away was experimenting, I guess, with uh, doing things on a computer, and I feel the colors here make it look like Away was using colored gels to do a birthday cake image. <laughs> the colors just look a little too comic bookish or gel-like, I don't know. But anyway, never mind. Target Earth, it was a good sign for things in the band. Things were looking good. In 2014, things started to sour once again. When Blackie originally left Voivod in 1991, during the, the Angel Rat recordings, he said, of course, he, he didn't like the sound of the album, he didn't like the direction the band was going in, but he said that Voivod had always been a democracy, all four members contributing their ideas together. And at that time, he felt the other three were into it, but they weren't accepting his opinion, and even Terry Brown was not accepting his contributions and he just felt really frustrated like suddenly my opinions don't count I'm out of the band well he was starting to get the feeling again that there wasn't enough transparency in the management and he was he wanted he wanted to have some band meetings he wanted to talk about it he wanted to sort his concerns out and he felt they weren't being met and so he left the band once again. Now at the time, Away said, well, you know, Blackie is more of a DIY kind of guy, and we totally respect that, but Voivod is now more likely to be signed by a major label, such as um, Century Media, Sony. So things are being done differently. In 2016, Blackie sued the band for withheld royalties. Around 2007, um, BMG gave the band an advance of $16,000 in royalties 
to be paid out to Blackie for the re-release of Roar, Killing Technology, and Dimension Hatros. However, it seemed that Blackie was never paid that money, and he kind of found out about it and started snooping in, investigating, and that's when he found out that he, he was never paid out those royalties. At the time, he tried to contact Snake, as well as Piggy's sister, and, and get some information from them, but he wasn't able to get a hold of them, and they never got back to him either. So, he ended up going to court to sue the band to get his money. <laughs> he, Blackie, suspected that Away and the band manager at the time there, James McLean, were withholding the money. And apparently in 2017, a settlement was made and he got that. However, it didn't stop there. In uh, another Blabbermouth report, um, it says, The bassist also claims that 50% of his copyright in Voivod's acclaimed 2013 album, Target Earth, had been fraudulently diverted by Away and McLean into a setup rights management company without any prior consent on his part, which he calls an act of misguidance, false representation, and fraud violating the Copyright Act. The same report also said uh, Blackie alleged that other royalties were due to him still, um, they were amiss, and that he would get every penny owed to him. In another interesting turn of events, it was also believed that the Voivod tapes for Nothing Face, Angel Rat, and The Outer Limits had been lost in the 2008 Universal Fire, which, you know, thousands upon thousands of master recordings were lost forever. However, um, Blackie, once again, this guy is actually a pretty astute fellow, he began investigating into that and pressuring Universal staff about it and found out that those tapes were actually uh, being stored in Pennsylvania. It was it Pennsylvania, right? And Blackie was able to get a hold of those tapes and apparently is now in possession of them, or at least he was at the time of this interview in 2019. In a more recent interview with Away, he talked about all the past members of Voivod Jasonic, E-Force, Blackie were all part of the Voivod family, and it sounds really good. However, there were some interviews going on in 2019. Uh, Blackie was working together on a project called Coeur Atomique with uh, Monica Edmund, and she was also gathering interviews to write a book which was going to be called Camera Obscura Lights on Voivod, and it was due to be released actually in 2020. So Blackie at the time said that more, more will be revealed about what was going on, um, I guess regarding these kind of, you know, missing royalties and so on in the book. However, the book, after I researched on the internet, I couldn't find that it had been released, so I'm assuming it has been put on hold so, 2014, Blackie was out of the band. Once again, they were in need of a bass player. And as it turned out, Chewy had an old friend from the younger days, a fellow by the name of Dominique Laroche, and he was a bass player around in the Quebec metal scene. They asked him if he would join the band again as a touring bassist at first. However, he fit in very nicely with the band. And what was very interesting was that you had Away and Snake, the founding members going way back to 1982-1983. And then you had Chewy and Dominique, old childhood friends. They had, I think they had been to the Voivod uh, Nothing Face concert together. Both of them had found their love for playing music because of Voivod in the early days. So, yeah, uh, Dominique was asked to join the band. And he also had one nickname that had already been given to him. Well, he basically was known as Rock or Rocky, and his last name, La Roche, in French means the rock, so he became Rocky. And thus came the present-day lineup of Voivod. So much to carry on. In 2016, Voivod released an EP of five songs called Post Society. This was the first material that was written with the new lineup, including Rocky on bass. One of the tracks they covered was Hawkwind's Silver Machine, 
and which is one of the tracks that was originally written and performed by Lemmy Kilminster. And one of the reasons why they said there in 2015 when they were writing and recording the songs, they were starting to hear about Motorhead shows being cancelled and, and wondering things aren't going so well, what's happening. So they recorded that song. Motorhead were of course one of the big influences, especially for the original band members. However, things were not going well with Lemmy and as we know, on December 28th, 2015, the rock icon Lemmy Kilminster of Motorhead passed away. In 2018, Eric Forrest decided that he wanted to do a kind of a tour of his days with Voivod, so including songs from Negatron and Phobos, and the band gave their blessings. Not only that, but he was actually sent a bunch of old artwork from the Phobos days and told you can pick what you want and you can use it to help promote the tour. Which I think is really cool. It's really good that they have that kind of, you know, good relationship. Voivod maintained a really good relationship with, with Eric. Um, he, of course, relocated to France. And whenever you, Voivod are in Europe and around the area, um, Eric might come on stage and perform a song or two with them. And as well, actually, they keep in good contact with Jason Newstead. And there are times when he's in the neighborhood, he'll also come on stage to play a song or two with them. But 2018 was a colossal year for Voivod. They released their 14th studio album, The Wake, and man, what a monster of an album that was. The band, keeping the Voivod sound, keeping the Voivod style and everything, stepped into what is probably their most progressive album yet. Songs once again being stretched out longer, and of course all these different change-ups in the music, the as uh, Pete Pardo of Sea of Tranquility called it, the, the herky-jerky type riffs, you know, the really kind of odd time signature riffs of bass and drums moving in different directions, but somehow still together. Um, and of course, they also had these, uh, like, you know, or orchestral sections brought in, and some of the songs had these kind of, like, tails going out where the song kind of finished, but there was this, like, extra new musical motif that came in there. The Wake was given so much praise by many critics and I saw a lot of YouTube videos of people talking about what a great album it is. It ended up winning them the award for um, metal and hard music, the Juno Award for metal and hard music in 2019, which is really a great thing. Voivod, such a long running band in Canada, finally really getting recognition like that. The Juno Awards is the highest level music award that you can get in Canada. Um, last year was uh, Unleash the Archers, by the way. <laughs> Another cool band I like. <laughs> and, you know, after this, I'd say that uh, the rest is more recent history. Um, oh, yeah, I, I do have to share with you one story that I came across uh, on, on a video somewhere uh, on YouTube. Voivod were doing a show in 2019, and I forget where it was, but anyway, they were going to do the show, and before they went on stage, um, a technician, I think it was, someone who had worked together with Jason Newstead, or one of Jason Newstead's friends anyway, brought this box in for Voivod, and opened the box, or crate, whatever it was, and inside was Piggy's metal guitar. Um, you can see it actually in the... We Carry On video. Let's see if I can put it like a scene or something like that there. And uh, yeah, that guitar had been sitting in that crate for 16 years. The last time it had been played was in 2003 in Florida. And the last song that Voivod played that night was their, I guess, theme song, Voivod. And after that, the guitar had been packed away and I guess put aside somewhere and then just left. And of course, after that, Piggy's health condition deteriorated and, you know, he passed away a couple of years later. So, I don't know, whatever, for some reason that guitar had just been sitting in storage in Florida for 16 years and one of Jason Newstead's, anyway, tech buddies or whatever, found out about it and brought it up there and opened it and they looked at it and it was still exactly as it had been like after the show, just packed away for 16 years. So they were thinking, wow, like Piggy's sweat is still on here. The fibers from his skin, whatever, are still on here. The tuning is still set as it was back then, Piggy's tuning. So then Away said to Chewie, why don't you play it tonight? 
And so, uh, you know, Chewie was like, wow, this is like, you know, a holy relic type thing here. What an honor if I can play it though. So that night, the last song they did for their show was Voivod and Chewie played the guitar. And in the video, you can see at the end of the concert, at the end of the song, um, he holds it up to the audience. It's kind of like, you know, Piggy is here or symbol of Piggy. Anyway, I thought that was really cool. Anyway, I just, I just thought about that, so I thought I should add that into the video here. The band have just continued with the lineup of uh, Snake Away, Chewy, and Rocky. They just released in February this year, February 11th, the um, Synchro Anarchy album. That album too is getting a lot of praise. The sound of Voivod is just really good. Um, the band seems to be really working well together. This really positive outlook for the band. And it's just wonderful as the band are, you know, just months away from reaching what is considered their 40th anniversary. Um, that's coming up and the band is still going on strong. They are releasing new albums with really fresh, new and exciting material. It's keeping the band's traditional sound, but it's also moving the band again into kind of new territory. So. You know, some people have said a band this old could just be touring their greatest hits and not really concerning themselves so much with writing new stuff, but they are putting out new stuff and it's it's good. It's really good. So that is basically it. Um, if there are some things in recent history I, I, I kind of avoided, it's just because I'm talking way too much. <laughs> but yeah, I, I think Voivod are really a band that is very special and I, I should mention there is a documentary in the works. Um, the next stage of the documentary is on Kickstarter, I think it is. Uh, kind of GoFund, GoFundMe type thing anyway, but the director said it's not a question about if the movie will be finished, it's a question about when it will be finished. And Maybe next year we can hope to see something, unless of course the interview was from last year, then maybe it's this year. So there is a movie in the works. I also read something about a book also being in the works, so hopefully we're going to hear more about that. Voivod have also released a couple of live albums recently. I think the most recent one was The Lost Machine, um, which has a lot of praise and said it's an excellent live album showing what the band can do live. And as well, there was an EP um, a little bit back there, including some performance they did at a Montreal jazz festival or with a jazz band. You can actually hear one of the songs from The Wake there is um, a version on the internet with uh, a, a brass jazz band playing along with them, which is kind of neat. So, yeah, Voivod are going on strong, coming up to 40 years, and, you know, let's hope the band will be around for a few albums more anyway. Okay, so there you go. That's my big run on the history of Voivod spread over three parts. I thank you very much for anybody who watched this episode, who watched all three episodes, who watched any Music as a Journey episodes. I am now going to have to hunker down into work a little bit. I'm not sure when I can get the next video up. I have a couple of ideas for topics, but, uh, you know, you, you just stop by and you'll see it when it happens, okay? All right, anyway, thanks again. Take care, everyone, and, uh, yeah. Bye-bye!